community of awesome, I'm Ava J and this is Bookish Pixie. So today I want to talk about something that in my opinion is not spoken about nearly enough and that's publishing internships. Those of you who follow my Twitter or blog probably know that I've done two publishing internships. The first internship was with a literary agency in which I was one of the agent's remote readers. And the second was with Entangled Publishing in which I was also one of their remote readers. So those of you who are writers who are not interested in getting involved in the rest of the publishing industry probably want to know what this has to do with you. Now I'm not going to say that all writers should have publishing internships because that's not what I'm getting at. I do think, however, that publishing internships are a great way for writers to learn. And so I'm going to share with you the top three lessons that I learned in my publishing internships. Before I get into the lessons, I'm going to real quick go over what a remote reading intern usually does. My internships for both the literary agency and Entangled Publishing were pretty similar. Both were unpaid, which is the norm for a lot of remote internships, and they involved reading submissions from authors and filling out a reader report. What was in the reader report varied a little in my internships, but they were both overall evaluations of the manuscripts. And filling those out is where the lessons came from. First lesson, subjectivity is real. Now writers hear over and over and over again about how subjective the publishing industry is and how just because one agent or editor doesn't like the manuscript doesn't mean another agent or editor isn't going to like the manuscript and you hear it over and over and over and it can start to sound like a cop-out answer but the truth is it's true. I can't tell you how many times I put down a reader report that I didn't connect with the manuscript and the reasons I put down didn't necessarily mean that the writing or the manuscript was bad. The truth was it just didn't connect with me. And I knew even as I was writing those reports that just because I didn't necessarily like those manuscripts didn't mean someone else couldn't like it because the truth was they were well written. But here's the thing in the publishing industry. For someone to take on your work, whether it's an editor or an agent, they have to absolutely love it and connect with it. The reason is this, if they're going to be working on it and trying to make it the very best it can be and advocating it, they need to absolutely want to dive into that manuscript and make it the best that it can be. If they don't feel passionate about a manuscript, then it's going to be really difficult for them to do the best work possible. As a writer, this is actually good news for you because you don't want to work with someone who isn't passionate about your work. Someone who thinks your work is okay isn't going to be able to make it nearly as good as someone who totally gets the manuscript. You want someone who completely understands the vision that you had for your manuscript so that they can then really pull it out and make it the best work possible. So yeah, subjectivity is real, but it does work in your favor in the end. Two, the first few pages are ridiculously important. As an intern, I wasn't allowed personally to reject a manuscript after a couple pages because I had to actually really dive into it. But I can tell you that about 85% of the time when I read the first page and thought I'm not connecting with this, I was not connecting with it 50 pages later. So what I'm trying to say is most of the time you really can tell if you're going to like the manuscript based off the first couple pages. Problems I found on page one were almost always there on page 50 or page 100 and so on. So when publishing pros say that they can tell based off the first couple pages whether or not they can connect with your manuscript, it's true. And finally, number three is more of an overall thing. I learned a lot about what does and doesn't work in a manuscript. Filling out reader report after reader report after reader report forced me to really pay attention to character and placing and plot and voice, etc., and learn what worked and what didn't work in each of those categories. This then became really helpful when I was writing and revising my own manuscripts. By learning what things worked and what things didn't work overall, I was able to try to avoid some of the bad things and do more of the good in my own work. I've also been able to apply a lot of the those lessons to other manuscripts I've critiqued because the lessons just build on top of each other. So whether you want to get a publishing job alongside your writing job or you just want to be a better writer, you may want to consider some publishing internships. After all, you never know what you might learn. So that's all I got for today. If you liked what you saw, don't forget to subscribe and comment and I'll see you guys next week.